This trip is an opportunity for people to learn about what ethical travel photography looks like through experience. It's also an opportunity for people to challenge stereotypes or assumptions that they may have about Kenya and see nonprofit work on the ground. A very good morning and a very warm welcome to Nairobi, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> My name is Erin. I'm also known as Erin Outdoors on social media. I am an adventure photographer, blogger, and international trip leader. I'm here in Kenya for a few reasons. To shoot for Ubuntu, which is a nonprofit that I've been working with for a little over a year. I'm here to lead a trip for supporters of Ubuntu so they can see the work that's being done. And I'm also here to show you what we're doing. We're heading to Mai Mai Hu today, so we've got a very scenic drive. Just pulled into Ubuntu. Everything is so green from all the rain that they've gotten um, this year. This is a playground, obviously, okay? <laughs> but we made it sure that uh, when the parents are sitting there, their kids are playing here and they are having I'm Jeremiah Kuria. I am the country director for Ubuntu Life Foundation. Ubuntu means I am because we are. Our organization here at Ubuntu started uh, with children with special needs and we have been giving them a place where they can be able to come together, which is a huge relief for their parents. This trip came about because Ubuntu wanted to show its backers where the products come from and it's also an opportunity for people to come to Kenya, see where the products are made, but then also meet people, stay with a Maasai tribe and challenge maybe the assumptions that they have about Kenya as a whole or about Maasai people and then also to experience some of the wildlife at an eco camp. I'm Zane Wildman, co-founder of Ubuntu. Uh, so started this with Jeremiah 18 years ago when I bought a one-way ticket to Kenya. When I first met Jeremiah, he was working in an orphanage with 140 kids. Ubuntu started there in that orphanage. The big issue that we realized was most of these parents couldn't pay school fees because they didn't have jobs. Even though we started in education and progressed into health, the ultimate goal was how do we get these parents of these children in our school to be able to provide for their own families, provide for their kids, and at the end of the day, that's a job. And not just a job, but a meaningful job. My trips came out of my audience wanting to travel with me in a way that connected them to themselves and to the place and to the other people that they were traveling with. When I facilitate a trip, I'm hoping to encourage somebody to be a better citizen of the world, to really listen to other people's stories and not center themselves. I'm really hoping that when I lead people on trips or workshops, they're just absorbing it and they're allowing themselves to be challenged, allowing themselves to be uncomfortable. From a photography perspective, it's really important that we consider how we're sharing these stories, especially from communities that may be marginalized by Westerners. When I'm leading a trip of photographers, I'm trying to facilitate conversations around these things. I simply give the invitation, how they want to take that, that invitation is up to them. I don't pose the people that I shoot. The way that they want to stand, the way they want to be, is part of the story that matters a lot. I just want to interact with them first. I want to see if they're comfortable with me. If they're not comfortable with me, I'm not comfortable taking their picture. Because you have to think about the phrase, take a picture. When you take a picture, to me, you're taking something, you know? A group of 50 children come every day and they are taken care of. And we are taking care of over 250 other children struggling with neuro issues. Those are all the children that uh, we are taking care of at Ubuntu. These images will be used to raise money for Ubuntu's programs. When I'm shooting at the school, those photos are also school photos for these kids to document their process over the years. A lot of the Ubuntu kids have 
neurological or physical disabilities. So it's really helpful for the school, for the families, and for the kids themselves to have photos of their progress as they get older. Jeremiah and I kind of looked at each other and were like, our vision is long term, then we need to own our own land. I started learning more and more from year to year just about the location of Mai Mayu and that it's strategically located in the country because it's on not only the major trade route of East Africa, but it's also the major tourist route. That's when we bought in 2005 the 11 acres of land. We have done our best to beautify the place. We have planted lots of trees so that uh, the place looks good and it's coming up very well. It was bare ground with nothing growing on here. We are very excited that it is getting beautiful every day. What I would hope that people take away from this experience is more than just coming home and saying, wow, those people were so lovely. They were so joyful. The smiles were amazing. I loved hanging out with the kids. I hope that this makes people more thoughtful photographers. I hope that they are more intentional when they click that shutter. If people took less photos after this trip than they did before this trip, then I feel really accomplished because you don't have to have your camera out all the time. You just have to be ready for that perfect moment. This is what you are gonna see on My Travel Diary, Kenya. A lot of these moms come from incredibly challenging situations. I spent most of my time in my Maihu not shooting, but talking and interacting with the kids and just getting a feel for it. When it comes to photographing tribes, it just comes down to respect and making sure you're not treating people like a museum exhibit. I love wildlife photography. My favorite thing to do is just show the charisma of animals.